Hey guys and welcome to our next video tutorial on the Ventus Director. Today we will talk about the tools that allow you to easily plan a show ahead and record or review a finished show to improve workflows. One tool you can use are pages. Those are simply templates with pre-filled data. To create a page you can queue a template and instead of taking it you can press this button down here. You can name the page and give it a description and keywords. When you want to create a page of a sub-template, you can do so by changing the level in this dialog. A thumbnail is automatically created when you create a page. Another thing you can use is the playlist window. The playlist is very useful when you have any kind of looping output with items, whose values will most likely never change. You can add templates, pages or assets to the playlist by simply dragging and dropping them there. You can see the name of the item and its status which shows whether it is queued, currently on air or has been taken off air already. Also you can see how long the item will be shown on screen. When the duration is zero, the item won't be taken off air by the playlist and you have to do this manually. Lastly you can see a description. You can change the name and the description by clicking the pen do button down here. The duration can be set by simply clicking into it. If you want to ignore all the durations, you can check the cross clock button. The button next to that defines whether the playlist should loop or not. You may also save playlists and reload them or append several playlists to each other. The next useful thing to use is the timeline down here. Every item that you queue will be shown down here no matter in which way you did this. By dragging and dropping a template page or asset into a timeline, it will be queued as well. The dragged item will always get the last position in the timeline. When you take the queued item on air, you can see that the director saves the time when you did this as well as when you take it off air. When you jump back in time and click the play button of the timeline, the director will do the text exactly the same way as it has been recorded. This way you can either just drop all items that you want to use on the next show into the timeline in the right order, or you can play the show or replay it by recording it and then replaying it. You can, of course, also use this feature to review a driven show to enhance your workflows for the next show of this kind. The timeline has several buttons to help control your show. The buttons on the middle bottom of the timeline control the slider of the timeline and pretty much work as expected. The buttons down here change the view of the timeline as described in the tooltips. You can jump to different positions and enable or disable automatically follow the timeline slider. Up here you have the actual timeline controls for each channel. You can take, update, take off and clear each channel and turn on the global user controls. Also you can activate and deactivate the channel's timeline. When deactivated no takes will be recorded and no takes will be done because of the timeline. You should turn this off when you use for example the playlist instead of the timeline. The timeline can be edited in some ways. You can rearrange the queued items, delete them from the queue or select an item and change its properties. Sometimes though you do not want this functionality and leave the show as it is. You can disable it by using the non-editing mode turned on and off using this button. Those are the tools that you can use to plan and record your show. There's one last thing though that can help you just as much as the playlist or the timeline. Those arrows that appear in each item suggest that the item derived from another item. When you hover over that arrow you can see the reference. Every value in the property editor that is marked red was changed from the original item. You can undo those changes with the revert button down here. So much for that. But this functionality can get very useful when you plan greater shows. When creating a page and queuing it at different points of time in the show, you are able to change the page after you have created all its copies. So when you click on one of the page's copies in the timeline and make the wanted changes, you can save them to the page. Now the changes will be applied to every item that derived from that page. This will not happen for items that have changed values. If you want to protect an item from changes to the original page, you can save it as an embedded item. To do so, again, click the Save button in the Properties window, but now click Save to Timeline Item. You can now see how the arrow of that item changes to an icon with two papers. Now this item will be handled independently from its origin. As you can see, this feature is very powerful when you want to create a really big show where you use the same page over and over again. 
Using this, you can make changes in the last minute very easily and you have control over which items to change. This was the overview of the tools you can use to plan a show. So after watching these videos, you are able to plan and run a show very easily and you know every tool that can help you with that. Just be sure to try them out and test their usefulness and potential to find out which suit your workflow best. In the next videos we will go a little bit more into detail and talk about the environment setup needed for a director show to run. So we will have a look at the concepts of the topology, the Ventus machine service, pipes and channels and director. Be sure to stay tuned and I will see you in our next videos. Bye!